Hello, my name is Amanda Taylor, and I'm a clinical therapist with Holy Family Memorial Behavioral Health. I want to thank you for joining me today to learn new strategies and skills to help improve your mental health during the coronavirus uh, outbreak. The coronavirus can be easily spread to other people through close contact, and because of this, there's been social distancing measures put into place to slow that spread. So these safer at home orders um, or the, the, the stay at home orders, uh, these practices have really changed the way that we all go about our daily lives from uh, you know school, work, recreational activities, um, just being able to go out and do stuff whenever we want is now really limited. Um, so I'd like to first talk a little bit about some of the negative consequences on our mental health that can result from this stay at home or safer at home uh, social distancing um, activities. And then I'd like to talk about some strategies to combat those challenges. So there is this thing called quarantine fatigue. So initially, when this all started, uh, it might have been pretty exciting and kind of neat. Uh, those first couple weeks, you didn't have to go to work or you didn't have to go to school. It was kind of a new thing. Um, but then as time goes on and those weeks turn into months, um, there can be this fatigue, this exhaustion that comes from not being able to um, interact with people and go out and do the things that we had all used to be able to do. Um, so there's a couple uh, points I'd like to kind of touch upon. So first is, you know, this quarantine fatigue can uh, lead to feelings of loneliness. Um, you're not able to go out and, uh, you know, spend time with your friends as much. Um, not able to maybe go to work if you're working from home. You don't have those uh, interactions with coworkers. Um, if you're avoiding making unnecessary, you know, trips to the store, um, you're not interacting just with, you know, people in general. Um, there can also be um, this lack of uh, just mental stimulation. Uh, lack of stimulating activities. So as you know, we're spending more time at home, you're not doing as many activities, you're not able to go out and, um, you know, spend time with, uh, you know, people that you usually would. Um, there's these lack of social gatherings. Um, these are the things that make life interesting and enjoyable and um, not being able to do these things can just lead to this lack of stimulation of your brain and mind. Um, you're seeing the same people every day, maybe your family. You're seeing um, the same environment every day. Maybe that's your house. Um, and it can just be unstimulating, which can actually make you feel more tired. Um, there's a disruption of routines and schedules. Um, Disruption in, in work schedules, maybe disruption in uh, school schedules for kids or adults that are going to college. Um, disruption in um, routines, like maybe you, you typically go out to dinner on Friday night or you typically, uh, you know, go to breakfast with uh, your, your family on a Sunday morning. Or even, you know, church activities, you normally do that on a Sunday. You don't have that necessarily anymore. Um, and that routine, uh, when we're in a routine, um, it can decrease stress. It can make life feel safe, predictable. Um, those routines uh, make it so that your brain has fewer decisions to make. So really it means that you're, you're, you have less energy um, that you're using. But now when a lot of our routines are disrupted, um, we have to make more decisions each day about what we're, you know, what we're going to do and how we're going to do things. Um, you have to think more. And this increase in, in thinking and decision making can also lead to feeling more exhausted at the end of the day. Even if you didn't really leave your home, it's just that disruption in routine that can make it, you know, very mentally exhausting. Um, and then the other thing of feeling really powerless and uncertain, 
um, with everything that's going on that um, can lead to an increase in, in stress. And that increase in experiencing stress can really leave you feeling exhausted as well. Um, so what can you do if you're noticing some of these symptoms of quarantine fatigue? Um, just feeling really mentally exhausted, might be feeling a little bit more irritable uh, with your family. It might be uh, just more in, you know, feeling more bored. Um, it could include maybe more substance use um, because of that lack of routine and, you know, lack of stimulation. Um, so it's a couple of things you can do. Some action steps you can take to kind of lessen the impact of these, you know, the social distancing and safer at home restrictions. Um, so one thing is to develop new routines, develop new schedules. So it's really figuring out how can I still have uh, things in my life that are routine and that I can look forward to on a daily basis. So it might be um, you know, scheduling out your day the night before. It might be setting up a routine for when you get up in the morning, even if you don't necessarily have to be anywhere, but setting your alarm every day for a certain time, making sure that you're scheduling in, um, you know, taking a shower, um, doing chores around the house, um, making sure you're scheduling in also uh, times for doing fun things, doing things that you enjoy. Now that might be different than what you used to do, but it's trying to be creative and figure out what, how else can you um, provide opportunity for you know, positive and rewarding experiences. Um, it can also be you know, every day setting out two goals of things that you want to accomplish and actually doing them. Um, it can be simple things like doing laundry to um, more complicated things like um, researching, um, you know, pro programs for school uh, that you'd be interested in. So it's really writing down two goals that can help you to feel accomplished, big or little. But you want those goals, you want those things to be um, realistic and things that you can complete every day. Um, if you're working from home um, or if you have kids that are doing school from home, it can be really helpful to separate um, the schoolwork or the, the, the work from, you know, your personal life. So it might be setting up a home office or a desk where that's where you do your work. For kids, it might be setting up just a space where that's where you do homework. And then um, setting a time to uh, make sure that you you stop working or stop you know schoolwork. Um, so it might be saying, all right, five o'clock every day, um, I'm going to leave my my work computer and my work phone, um, you know, at my desk, and I'm not going to look at it. I'm just going to then separate my my work life from my home life. Um, it could be developing um, other new routines, like um, if you always go to a certain restaurant for dinner on a particular night, and that's something you look forward to doing with you know, family or friends, it might be figuring out, well, okay, how can we um, maybe get carry out of that from that restaurant and take it home and maybe pretend like we're dining in. Um, it might be figuring out um, if your gym isn't open and you normally go and work out, figuring out how you can still uh, do workouts from home, scheduling in uh, maybe a, a video through, you know, an online video, workout video. It might be scheduling a time to be outside and do a workout instead. Um, so it's really about how can you build in different routines in your life um, and schedules so that you can have, um, feel more like you're in control of your life. It gives you a little bit more of a feeling of power. Um, you know, the other piece is uh, we are probably being, you know, spending more time with uh, our immediate family, those people in our household. Um, and that's great that, you know, you get to spend time with them, but it might be that uh, it's a little bit too much time. 
you have too much uh, interaction. Um, and so it's about trying to schedule time for yourself, um, having that alone time. And everybody has a different level of how much time they need with others and how much time they need alone. Um, but it's making sure to schedule that in. If you're starting to notice you're more irritable with your significant other or less tolerant um, of your kids, that might be a sign that uh, you need to schedule in some time for yourself. Um, and that's doing something like, could be reading a book, working on a craft, um, you know, some, just something that you enjoy, watching a TV show, um, but making sure to kind of have that time to yourself. Uh, being proactive is another uh, strategy to help with the quarantine fatigue. Um, it might be that, uh, you know, your job, you lost your job because of all this. So it's trying to take some control of that situation. Um, it might be starting to update your resume. Maybe it's practicing your job interviewing skills or doing some online research about different jobs that are available uh, in your area. So it's trying to take some action steps to address um, you know, situations that um, are difficult or challenging. Um, if you're feeling lonely, it might be uh, trying to really set a schedule uh, for a daily phone call with a friend or family member. Maybe setting up uh, a you know one time a week where you will uh, you know each have that that space to be be with each other and talk. It might be setting up a um, a Zoom meeting or some sort of you know online communication, video and audio communication. Um, so that you can still connect with family members and friends. Um, so this is all, you know, this has all been very difficult for, for us. Things in our lives have changed, our routines. Um, and, you know, at first it might seem exciting, get to stay at home. Uh, you know, we're, we're not having to do, you know, our normal activities and routines. Um, but as time goes on, it can be exhausting uh, to not have that, that physical, uh, you know, stimulation from being able to go out and do things. Um, it can be fatiguing and tiring to um, have to deal with some of the, you know, all the stressors that come from, uh, you know, some of the social distancing requirements with finances and work and childcare. Um, so it's, you know, reminding yourself that there are things you can do, uh, even though it feels like there's a lot that's out of your control, there is a lot that is in your control. Uh, it's in your control as to how you respond to this. Um, you can take action steps to set new routines you can be proactive on dealing with problems in your life that might have come up because of uh, the situation. Um, you know, it's uh, making sure that you schedule alone time uh, to do activities that are enjoyable and rewarding and, you know, balancing those out with other maybe requirements and responsibilities. So hopefully um, there's something you can take from today that can help you to more effectively cope with uh, the coronavirus. Uh, I appreciate you being here with me today and take care. Thank you.